So let's begin with today's topic. Today's topic is about first we would be covering the apps. What are apps? Two categories we discussed: desktop and mobile apps. Very easy to understand desktop apps. We have been using it. So as the name suggests, they are run only on your laptops, only on your PCs. They were initially designed only for the laptop screens. Now they have been designed as responsive, so that they can also run on your mobile phones. But earlier they were only for for these particular uh, set of devices. Examples: your word processing softwares like Microsoft Word, your web browsers like Amazon. Oh, sorry, your Chrome, Safari, Firefox, Edge. All other browsers are there in the market, and you can have any browser you want as per your requirement. Then certain media players, which are designed only to run on desktop properly. Then heavy games, like many, there are many heavy games like Halo or uh, your uh, GTA and many other games that you play. They are designed to run on desktops with high configurations. You need to have high graphic cards. You need to have uh, uh, consoles as well, gaming consoles attached to your desktops and other specifications as required by. By the uh, the memory taken by a particular game, or or the graphics used by a particular game, so this is desktop apps. Very simple. They are run only on desktops. Now they nowadays they have been uh, uh, made responsive so that they can be run on mobile phones as well because the number of users on mobile phones have been increasing more than the number of users on a desktop. So to cater the larger audience. The industry is moving first towards mobile apps and then towards desktop apps. So the next topic is your mobile apps. Mobile apps is of three types: web, hybrid, and native. The uh, these are very important, very important to understand. So we'll understand the native app first. What does native means? In general, in English, native means something uh, particular to a region, something particular to a territory, like your native language. native food so it is associated with with a boundary so native means an app which is associated with a particular device so let's see this example so native app is either android specific or apple specific for instance your calculator a separate calculator is designed for android devices a separate calculator is designed for apple devices the calculator that is running on apple device cannot run on uh, your android device because it is platform specific so first point comes is that your native apps are platform specific they are operating system specific you cannot mix match you cannot run an apple app on a android app if if that is the case then that application is a native app N second major point that makes native app uh, uh, separate from the category these apps need access to your devices so these apps can access your microphones your speakers your phone book camera location gps for instance you have a navigation app there is a separate navigation app for android devices there is separate navigation app for apple devices so these navigation apps need access to your gps there are certain applications that ask you that uh, okay allow access to your phone book allow access to your microphone for instance your dialer your phone dialer is an application that needs access to your phone book so these are platform specific they require access of your device features like camera microphone and other and simple examples like your calculator phone book dialers calendars certain games are designed only for a particular device for instance you see sometimes a game has been designed only first for android devices or a game has been designed only for the apple devices so those are native apps your camera needs access to the hardware the the hardware of your device the camera the camera app needs access so this is a native app platform specific needs access to your device features and you cannot mix match you cannot use one platform specific app on the other then that app is your native app so any questions related to native app do we understand the boundary the native app uh, has to stay inside so native app cannot move outside the operating operating system boundary next comes your web mobile apps 
So these were the older versions. Now we have moved to the hybrid versions, which we would be discussing uh, just after this one. So what is web mobile app? Web mobile app, as the name suggests, they do not have an app like feature. The main, main uh, distinguishing feature is that a web page is displayed on your, uh, on your mobile screen. Earlier, when uh, Amazon or Facebook, like uh, huge companies, wanted to cater an audience on mobile phones, they could not provide heavy data on a mobile phone earlier when mobile phones were not that advanced. At that point of time, they, they had this feature so that a web page can be adjusted as per the resolution of your device. So when a browser is used as the user interface, your browser is providing you the information and it looks like an app running on your mobile device, then it's a web app. So main feature is it is built using the core languages, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Native apps are not necessarily to be built using these languages. They can have uh, platform specific languages associated with them or C, C sharp, Java can be used to build native apps. But for web apps, we need HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Second, they do not access device features. Earlier, they were not accessing device features, but now due to widespread uh, of the app functionality, your Amazon app sometimes asks you for the GPS location. Why? Because uh, to ease the delivery services. So earlier, just remember, this was the older way of creating apps. Web mobile apps, when you wanted to create huge applications, something which can change the data on real time. Native apps sometimes do not are not restricted to change data on real time. But web apps were designed when user, uh, when, when the provider of this application wanted the user to have different data at different point of time. For instance, trending products by Amazon keep on changing as per the occasions, as per the Christmas sale or New Year sale or any other, any other uh, aspect they feel is the right time to update their list of products. So the web apps are interactive, are built using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, do not need access to device features, and they can change the data on real time basis. And they were primarily being used by uh, big companies, like huge companies were using them. Next comes your hybrid app. The new way of creating uh, applications is hybrid app, wherein your application has functionality of both your native as well as your web app. So how does this help them? First, being a native app, it can access your device features like your location, phone book, or your, uh, or let's say your camera. For instance, you install a LinkedIn application and now LinkedIn asks you, okay, give access for the phone book so that it can find the contacts on LinkedIn server, which can be connected with you. Or if you want to upload your profile picture on WhatsApp, it can, uh, it needs to have access to the camera. So first uh, benefit for hybrid app is it can have uh, the features of a native app. Second, huge applications which need the data to be changed on real time basis can be incorporated in a native shell. So I'll repeat myself. Uh, the web app functionality of changing data on real time basis can be incorporated with a native within a native shell. Now you have a platform specific app which can access the data, uh, which can access the features of your device. Along with that, it can change the data on real time basis. That is called your hybrid app functionality of both native and web app. Now, if it's a web app, it needs to be built using this HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And then, then it can be downloaded through app store. This is because of native app, because native apps are the apps which could be downloaded earlier. Now, web app uh, being built along with the native functionality becomes a hybrid app. And now a hybrid app has an icon which can be downloaded from the app store. The another major benefit is cross platform functionality. Now native apps were platform specific. Now web apps were not platform specific. Now one app only when written and tested can be built for both devices together for Android as well as for Apple. So hybrid apps are cross platform. 
this cross platform means multi platform one application can run on both you can mix match in native app you cannot mix match but in hybrid apps you can use one application on both the devices so it's save it saves time for the big companies as well they need not create two apps for different devices they can create one app which can run on multiple devices and second it can access the features as well uh next comes your the uh, the examples now amazon uber google calendars facebook all are hybrid apps so earlier they were in falling in the category of web app when they were initially built now they are falling in the category of hybrid apps further uh, you, you you may hear like there are progressive uh, web apps pwas so it's a high, higher version of hybrid apps it's more advanced version of hybrid apps so just understand this point any questions related to native web and hybrid apps just put it in chat feel free to ask anything because right now we know that things may seem little bit uh, overwhelming but don't worry don't uh, hesitate at all uh, in asking questions okay so uh, uh, a web app so let's see what is web app someone is asking that okay could you explain uh, web app once more sure let's do it so okay let's see this one very nicely structured diagram so this is a native i'll where is my pen yeah so this is a native app this is your web app just see this one over here the native app is platform specific it cannot move outside the android or your uh, ios software it cannot move outside these operating systems this web app is running on the browser there is no application there is nothing being installed on your device it is running on the web servers or uh, world wide web it is running on the web through your browser so there is no platform specific functionality being involved the servers are directly providing you the data on your mobile devices through browser there is nothing pre installed on your device you are accessing it through chrome safari internet explorer so web app is not boundary specific it is directly accessing data from the servers of the company what is a server the where entire data of a company is stored for instance you log in onto facebook first your request you requested for your home page the request goes to the facebook headquarters their servers their data data warehouses they fetch your data and bring it back to your device that is called the the, the server the data warehouse where your information is being stored by the company so that whenever you request it it can be provided after performing authentication checks like if you have entered correct username correct password or not so this is web app which is not boundary specific providing you data through browser and you are like searching a website but that website looks like an application running on your mobile phone and when the functionality of both is involved it becomes a hybrid app because the uh, the drawbacks of web app were we were not able to access camera we were not able to access mobile phone uh, the phone book we were not able to access the location of the device so for instance you're using some fitness application and that fitness application need to access your location so that they can check how many steps you have walked so that is happening through a hybrid app that uh, your data is being monitored through the device functionality that is from your gps and it has been getting regularly updated through the web functionality your data is regularly updated on your server for instance if we take example of native app as calendar your mobile calendars or mobile calculators let's take example of calculator forget calendar calculator if you perform any calculation and erase it does this get stored anywhere on your device no it does not get stored anywhere unless or until you have uh, enabled history it does not get stored anywhere it's just an application that provides you some output instantly and it does not store anything does not retain anything on the other hand 
you have your Facebook app and you enter some comment and you delete some comment. You can either fetch it, you can check when that comment was deleted, who commented on your website and, and many other stuff. You can fetch your com comments like 100 days before as well. So because web apps are storing your data, web apps are helping you fetch that data. So combining both functionalities is a hybrid app. So web app, just searching something on the web through browser. There is no boundaries related to the operating system associated. But in hybrid apps, we have removed the boundaries. Along with that, we are using the mobile uh, hardwares like speaker phone, speakers uh, and your cameras and other stuff. So I hope this makes a little bit more clear. Do not get uh like uh do not worry that if you do not understand it completely the more we'll keep on coding the more we'll un more we'll get to know about these applications once we will start building you will tend to understand it more so any other questions related to this before we move ahead to the uh, software development life cycle okay so let's move ahead. The next major topic is software development life cycle. In order to understand software development life cycle, we need to answer three major questions. Number one, what is SDLC? That is software development life cycle. Why software development life cycle and how SDLC is implemented? Let's try to understand them one by one. Now, what is SDLC? If I have to explain it, I would say it is a step-by-step -step methodology. So if I just pick up the big major points, step-by-step -step methods. Number two, what does it do? Helps developer plan, create your test and deploy. Any, any software product, deploy software product. And third major point would come, it is used for both small scale and large scale. Everywhere it is being used, small scale and large scale. So let's uh, go, it, go through it once again, step-by-step -step methods, which help us to plan, create, test, deploy software products and used for both small scale and large scale. That's it, that is software development lifecycle. Now, why is it used? Let's have some major points for this as well, because it's a standardized, standardized, let's say, structured, uh, what we can say, process. It's a standardized structured process. Why it produces high quality and low cost software by high quality means minimum bugs minimum uh, uh, errors and faster results low cost minimum cost to the company to build a product and lastly uh, what can we say where's the pen yeah lastly we can say it uh, it uh, software development lifecycle is uh, used so that this product, this software product can be achieved in shortest possible time. Shortest possible time. So what is SDLC? Step-by-step -step methods. What does it do? Plan, create, test a software product used for small scale and large scale. Why SDLC? It's a standardized structured process, produces high quality and low cost software in shortest possible time. So it saves time, enhances quality and reduces cost. Now, how is it achieved? So as discussed in the, what is SDLC section, that it is a step-by-step -step methodology. So what are these steps? These steps are categorized into six stages. So. These are the six stages. Number one is your analysis phase. Number two is your design phase. Number three, development phase. Number four, testing. 
नंबर फाइव डिप्लॉयमेंट नंबर सिक्स मेंटेनेंस नाउ ईच स्टेज इज डिजाइन फॉर स्पेसिफिक पर्पस we would understand this specific purpose in this lecture today but over here i have listed the uh, persons responsible to achieve this stage successfully to perform required tasks under this uh, under each stage so if we see analysis stage the uh, the members responsible to perform analysis phase is your product owner or your project managers or chief technical officers business analysts so what does analysis cover it covers the idea generation to in uh, to to know the target audience and other things we would be coming to each stage now then design needs to be performed by your ui designers user interface designers or system architects development through front end developers back end developers this is the category where we lie these two categories are the sections where we can perform our job now testing it can be done through testers or quality engineers deployment <coughs> it's a devops job wherein uh, you deploy the product when what is deployment when you release the product when once it it passes the required tests you release it in the market and then comes your maintainer maintenance uh, through the support managers what is maintenance basically when you face errors or any issues after the product has been released into the market you make those uh, amendments so that your product is running smoothly so this was a general overview now to understand these stages we would be designing one of the user screen today we would be developing it as well writing html css code to understand how these two things are happening together along with the analysis phase as well so our target is to cover these three in detail these three are not very much important as of now for us we need to focus on first three stages analysis we understand the product design we know how to create a layout development how to write a uh, code for that layout so we would be covering these three in detail today the other three we, we you can ignore it as of now you do not need this as of now so let's move ahead to the analysis phase so what is analysis phase this is first stage uh that involves data gathering the it involves the product you want to build to know your target audience and listing down functionalities that you want in your product so to understand these three major phases analysis design and development i have picked up a case study that is we would be building a food delivery app not the entire app just one user screen that is your login screen we would be building a login screen for a user so to to check how things are happening in a software development life cycle now to fully understand the analysis phase the best and most effective way is to have a goal statement now what is a goal statement goal statement is a statement that has all the questions that you want to be answered before writing the layout of your application and this statement answers all the all those questions so if we just go through this goal statement we can see i've written one single line our product what is our product what will it let users do what are the actions associated with that product what those actions will affect what who will what are the those actions will affect what are the outcome of those actions and then why do you need to design this product what made you what was your motivation and how will you measure the effectiveness of your product so if i'll just uh, remove the these lines so now we would answer these questions one by one number one what is our product so let's see once we will keep on filling these blanks we would understand how a goal statement helps us have a clear idea about our target audience about our product its functionality and how to measure the effectiveness of our product number 1 what is our product as we said it would be a food delivery app so our our food delivery app will let users what action would it perform so it would help users to order their meals quickly and easily from a restaurant 
So for instance, you are sitting at your place, you want to order something, you simply go on to a food application, food uh, delivery application. There are a list of restaurants, you select one of your choice, you pick up the dishes you want to have, and you go to the checkout page, pay and the order is submitted, accepted by the restaurant, and they are preparing the meals. And once it is prepared, it comes back to your doorstep. So it's a general user journey for your application. We would be coming to the user journey as well. Now, uh, the next is what will uh, effect, what effect would it bring? So uh, as, as I discussed, it is for those users who need access to ready-made meals. They do not want to prepare it. They want ready-made meals at their doorstep. So let's read it once again. Our food delivery app will let users order their meals quickly and easily from restaurant, which will affect which users. This is target audience. This is where we are targeting the audience. This is we are telling the action our application would perform. And this is the broad application name. So it, this, which, what is the target audience? Users who need access to ready-made meals at their doorstep. Now, why you wanted to create this application? So the idea behind is to avoid the hassle of having to prepare the meals themselves and visiting the restaurant so that their own work of preparing the meals themselves or visiting a restaurant can be uh, removed. So that was the motivation that you want to target those audience who want ready-made meals and why you wanted to target those audience so that they can be, they can have this problem solved. So like there is a working class, uh, someone who wants the ready-made meals daily at their doorstep, you can have a subscription model on your application. And how will you measure the effectiveness by reading user reviews or tracking restaurant sales? So it's a very broad overview to get an idea how our application needs to be structured and for whom. So are we able to understand the, uh, the uh, benefit of a goal statement before initiating a product? So any questions related to goal statement, any line you did not understand? So I'll mark it uh, meantime, this is app info. This is functionality. This is target audience. Audience. This is what problem you're solving. And this is uh, your uh, uh, measuring parameters. Measuring parameters. So we are tackling few major areas of every application. So any questions related to goal statement before we move ahead? Right, it's right. It's in the planning stage. The analysis phase is the planning stage where you do not write anything. You just sit with your uh, product owners or the board of directors, or simply if you are the only product owner, you sit with yourself and note down all the points related to an application and your product and the services, outcomes, drawbacks, competition in the market, target audience, how you're going to overcome it, what unique you're going to provide, all those questions that come to your mind when you're brainstorming. So you write it and answer them. So that is analysis phase. So moving on, in order to achieve the goals, we need to map the user journey. So what is a user journey? User journey is like a visual representation your user would go right from opening the application till finally leaving the app. So once you open a food delivery app, you select products, make the payment, check out, you track the delivery uh, partner. Once you receive the product, they, they give you a pop-up, enjoy your food, your product has, your food has been delivered in so and so time and you leave the app. Your, your journey on that application finishes. So in order to clearly define that, we always create a visual representation through a flow chart. Now this flow chart is very important, very important. It is very much necessary when you're working in big companies, you need to create a flow chart so that you can understand how many screens do I want to make? What would be the order of one screen to the other? 
do I need to add some more functionality or not? It gives you a, a very clear overview from which step you need to move on to, from which step to another step and then so on. So for instance, if we look at this particular flow chart, it gives an idea to developers how many screen this particular food application would have. For instance, let's say you open the app. First, there is sign up screen or sign in screen. If there is a new user, you, you initiate a sign up screen. If user is already registered, you give a sign in screen. Then comes your home screen. Then you have a search bar which would provide search screens or menu screens. Multiple options would be there. Multiple restaurants would be there. Then you have the cart page where the shopping cart page, like where the person would select a dish and put it in cart. Now, if the person checks out, it would move on to this screen. If person does not check out, it would move on to this particular cart again. Okay. If person wants to add another item, then uh, the user would move to the cart, add another item and come back. Similarly, over here, we have two parts. If user searches something and uh, it's uh, he or she is okay with the search, it would go ahead. Otherwise, it would come back to the menu screen again. Okay, search something else. Now, suppose user has selected something, checks out, we go to the checkout screen for the payment information. Then enter details, logic would be there. Then payment screen, okay. Enter your card details or enter your uh, net banking details and other information. Then you have multiple options available, pay on delivery, yes or no. If no, then enter the card details. So it defines a path that user needs to go through. Okay, and, five, and later on it would be the order confirmation screen. So do we have some questions in chat? So who gathered these info? Uh, so uh, the answer provided by one of our uh, friends is right, that product managers or business uh, owners are supposed to gather this idea. They, because they are the ones who want this application to be in the market. They are the ones who want this application to be used by certain set of audience. So they provide, they gather these ideas. They sit with the, the analysts and create this path flow. This path once created is provided to developers so that they can have an overview of how much work needs to be done. Depending on the number of screens, the deadlines of a project are, design, are, uh, are decided. Okay, a project would take six months, sometimes a year depends on complexity, how complex a project is. So this is very important to create a user flow diagram. So whenever you're building a project of your own, a simple web page as well, I would highly recommend create this page, the, this user flow diagram. Okay, what would happen if I click this? What would happen if I go to this screen? What, what should be my next screen? How many screens should be there? It helps you avoid errors. It helps you, you uh, Spare. It makes your coding journey very easy. So any questions related to user flow uh, diagrams, because this was your analysis phase when you're just uh, making your idea stronger and stronger and more viable. Next on, we would be moving to design phase. So any questions related to this user flow diagram? Just give me uh, no questions in chat. It would be easier for me to uh, move ahead as well. Perfect. So next part is very interesting. Now the part begins where we would actually be creating uh, a login screen of a food web application, a food mobile application. And we would, so uh, the which part you want me to repeat once again? Uh, is it the user flow diagram or the analysis phase in general? Okay. Okay. So user flow is just like a flow chart. So let me see. Yeah. So if you have suppose this one, this is step one, open application. Then step two go to the search bar. We can say search bar. Suppose we are creating Google home page, open Chrome browser, Chrome icon, click Chrome icon, go to search bar, enter uh, step three, 
enter your question. Step four, we would say uh, hit submit or hit uh, uh, search button. Hit search button. So this is a very simple user flow. I am I'm just imagining if that my application has been created. Now, what would be the steps that a user has to go through in order to get the desired result? Because if we see over here, the user wants to ask a question and get a result. Now, this would go to, let's say, step five, result displayed, results. Now, my agenda to create Google home page is to provide results to user. Now, in order to get results, how user has to start? User has to open the Chrome icon. So I have to create a Chrome icon. Okay, then my home page should have a search bar where user can enter the question. Okay, then I have to read that question. Then I have to create a button so that my question can be sent to the data house and data house can provide with the results. So I'm just imagining, okay, all these things are to be there in my application. So user flow diagram tells me if I start opening my application and the moment I leave it, how many things I need to perform while being on that app. So that is just a representation, visual representation, which tells us what all needs to be there. Very simple uh, representations are made because user flow, if it is as simple as possible, makes it easier for you to code. It's just a flow diagram. Just see, we are moving from this arrow to some other arrow to some other arrow. If we go like this, like this, and so on, and we reach our final destination. We started from here and we ended over here. And in between our journey, we had to go through certain steps. Defining those steps is a user flow diagram. Okay. Okay. So let's move ahead to the next interesting phase that is design phase. Uh, very important. We need to perform it every time. It can be either a raw design or a full fledged design depends upon time availability or uh, the need of project as well. So there can be a team of designers or sometimes developers only doing designing as well. So it can depend from company to company also. So let's move on to next screen. So next part. Uh, software maintenance is the last part. It's post the deployment. So software maintenance is, is a very uh, like topic that we need not uh, worry about as of now, because right now we as uh, web developers need to create something first. Maintainers need to write tests again so that they need to check if the bug encountering is correct or not. Should it be removed or should it be left as it is? Because sometimes if you try to remove a small bug, can hamper some bigger functionality of your app as well. So it, it depends if, an, if a bug has to be removed or not. There are many factors in maintenance step. So we need not worry about it as of now. Once we become senior developers, we then we tend to step into that uh, category of uh, uh, testers or debuggers. So no diagram as of now, I remember you can search it on, uh, Google, if there any diagram is provided, I do not remember any specific diagram being provided for the maintenance step. So let's move to the design phase. Design phase is giving uh, an image to your application. The first part is sketching. So what is sketching? Sketching is when you pick a pen, you pick a paper and you start uh, scribbling around. That scribbling part is called sketching. So uh, it, it, it is raw. Just look at this sketches and try to read what is written over it. Three screens, sign in, discover tab, recipe info. Just go through it for one minute. Okay, so you see, very simple drawings need not to be clean, need not to be very fancy. 
just pick up pen and paper and try to draw every screen that you see on a user flow diagram. Just try to visualize what all elements need to be there. For instance, they have listed a text over here. So let's see. They have listed a text over here. Okay, an image. This is a, a representation of image. Some text over here as well. Again, some text. Then set of images. Then some buttons or some images again. And if we see this text input tags, your text, then your area where you can enter your password, a button and some text, simple. So sketches are need to be very simple. So let's say we want to design a login page. I'll create a sketch, how a login page sketch I want, how a login page I want to look like a very raw diagram. So let's say I want to have some logo over here, logo of my application. It's an I'm representing cross with an image. Then let's say I want to have some opening text that whenever my uh, user opens this application, it should see this text. Then it must be written login somewhere like this, let's say, and we'll have username over here. We'll have password over here. And we'll have a nice button over here, which will say login or sign in anything. So it's a very simple looking sketch. Uh, first design phase, which tells us, okay, what all elements do I want? Now, remember this sketch need not have all the elements in your final design. It's just the first idea you wanted. So why sketching is important. It does not cost you anything. It gives you a brief idea to start with. Okay, you can first place these elements and then think again, do I need something else? So a, a starting point, this is sketching. Next comes your wire framing. Wire framing is providing a nice layout, like making your idea more strong in a more cleaner way. Still wire framing does not have any colors. Wire framing is all black and white no colors as of now, but a cleaner representation. You are moving towards the final product step by step. This is wireframing. Uh, is my voice breaking for others as well? Because uh, one of our uh, students is saying the voice is breaking. Uh, is it, it might be okay. Okay, perfect. So you can, uh, for, for the ones, uh, if the voice is breaking, kindly connect once again. There might be some network issue at your end. So let's uh, move ahead. So wireframing tells you a cleaner representation. Wireframing tells you cleaner representation and tells you from which screen to other screen you can go. I've just uh, considered two screens as of now, login screen and home screen. This is login screen uh, as per the design being prepared by this sketch and uh, like we want this sketch, we would be preparing a wireframe for this particular sketch. We would be seeing that right now. And it, you prepare wireframe for each number of screens that you see on your user flow diagrams. Once you're done with it, you start adding colors. You start giving more styling. You start deciding fonts. You start providing like you've uh, made the back button round. You have made this rectangular submit button. You enter some dummy images, some dummy icons, dummy text to uh, prototype is basically that how your application would look like eventually when actual information is being added. Right now you, uh, you add dummy information to check how it would look like. So you're moving step by step towards your final product. First, uh, like raw sketch, then neat sketching, this is done either through some softwares or online platforms and then prototype adding colors. Your prototype has colors. When prototype is provided with functionality using JavaScript or other languages, those prototypes are handed over to uh, the clients as well so that they can have an overview by going through certain set of screens to check if the product is correct. If they pass, then you create the final product. Any questions regarding wireframe and prototype? Because now we would be moving towards creating a wireframe and prototype for the login sketch that we used. Any questions so far? Just go through wireframe and prototype for one minute. And any questions you have, uh, just let me know. 
remember wireframe no color black and white but neat neat representation prototype with dummy data but with uh, colors and images as well okay nice yeah we would be coming to the online application we would be creating one the one i would uh, i would be using is figma uh, .com uh, it's a beautiful website where you can create wireframes and prototype i'll show you right away how to use it on a basic level and then you can go ahead and explore it for uh, some complex uh, screens as well you can try exploring it we'll create one very beautiful login page today let me open uh, figma for us yeah so simple figma.com you go to there you sign in and a web a, a page like this would open so i'll uh, quickly refresh it so that if uh, we can make sure that uh, we are logged in properly so everyone able to view my screen right this figma uh, dot com web page because it's very important to have an understanding how we are creating okay so first we would be targeting for the mobile application in order to do that what do you do you go to, so do not focus on this particular tool do not try to just memorize the steps of this figma.com just try to see what we are doing because every tool has their functionality and you can perform this on many tools there are many online platforms so i'm just showing you one of the tools so this part belongs to ui ux engineers but sometimes when you're working in uh, let's say a startup at that point of time there's team of like like let's say 25 people and a web developer needs to have an a, a, a well defined understanding how to create basic layouts or for instance you're creating a product for your own self you're creating a full blown project you do not want to write code straight away so that that time you need to know but for bigger companies some very complex projects there are separate ui ux engineers and you can move to that role as well a web developer can move to that role very easily so let's see let's not waste uh, uh, our precious time uh, more because we have many many things to study today so let's let's pick uh, iphone 8 it gives me a nice layout now i want to create a logo over here what i'll do i'll just open this square uh, this one this particular i'm just creating a wireframe go through the steps and if you face any kind of doubts we'll cater it at the end so i want to give it a very nice round shape i'll adjust height and width properly this is height this is width let's say so nice round circle and uh, let me just uh, move it a little bit in the center perfect now this is nice one. I want to add some text for my representation. I'll add over here. Let me write a simple logo. Logo. Okay. Let's edit this text. So I'm quickly going to this uh, one. Let's say what a font size can we have? Let's have, I think 24 would be good and let's have a nice font family okay okay so let's move it in center next we had this opening text over here right so let's have a nice text let's write Okay, let's uh, um, let's have some nice oh font size. I think this is this looks good. Uh, Raul, excuse yeah. me. Yeah, can you do it again, please? Like I don't understand how you get it to this uh, part, please. Uh, this particular text part. The whole yeah. So first step. So first step is put picking up the frame. You pick up a nice phone size frame. I picked up the iPhone 8. Then I wanted a logo over here. You remember the sketch? I wanted a logo, opening text, then login information, username, password, and button. 
So how I created this circle from this shapes, I created this eclipse. And yeah, not you, that one. Uh, I'm sorry to one? interrupt you, but like, you know, from the beginning, how you bring the whole that uh, text? This text part? The whole, yeah. Because we was so, in another. So when we come into this part. So you click on explain. this text, T part? I, know, I understand this. about that. Uh, about the one that, you know, the Figma. The whole that Figma, I don't understand where it come from. So Figma is a website. website. Figma.com is a website. Okay. All right. Okay. So you just open Figma.com. It would ask you to log in. And once you log in through your Google account or you create a uh, sign up, uh, you just register over there, it would provide you the screen. This is the opening screen. Uh, Rahul, can you share the link uh, with the participants yeah, sure. on the group? Yeah, sure. So they will. Yeah. So I'll, maybe I'll they will later just on. One moment. Let's say I'll just give me one minute. I'll share it right away. Okay. So I've shared a link on the on the chat. It's figma.com. When you click over there, just click on login and you can you would be able to uh, very easily get the screen. Very simple steps. Uh, you would be able to get that. Because initially it takes a little bit five to seven minutes to uh, get registered and then open the screen, but it's very easy to do it. So let's move to the next part. I'm just uh, creating a wireframe. What is wireframe? A nice representation of my sketch. Now, what do I want over here? I wanted some login text that would tell this user screen uh, is, uh, is about a login page. So I'll just go to this text. I would create a text box. It would give me this cursor. This, this is blinking over here. I'll uh, write login and let's I'll uh, I want it a little bit bold over here. I will get this bold and let's have font of 40. So I'm getting I'm styling this over here. This is a nice way to create a layout so that when you start coding, you know uh, how it should look. What what should be the range of your font size? What so nice way to start with. So let me reduce this one. We'll come moment I keep on moving it, it tells me the alignment. Okay, this is the middle part. So I'll leave it over here. I'm just placing everything as center aligned. So what do I want next? I want some line underneath. Let's put some line. It would be look, it would look nice. So let's say I want to put a line over here. So suppose your line is not straight. You can see over here this angle that it's 1.96 degree rotated. Just mark it zero, press enter, your line would be stay straight. Now I want it to be a little bit bold. So over here, you see this one to uh, this one number. Either you can uh, hover it like this. I'm just, uh, I'm, I've pressed my left uh, mouse click and I'm just taking it to the right side. It's increasing and decreasing. Or you can put a number as well. For instance, I want seven. And if I hit enter, I'm getting seven. Or let's say I want uh, six. So it's decreasing uh, as per the thickness. This is the thickness of line. Now let's create username and password block. Now what can we do it? Let's create another line first. So uh, like uh, someone is asking that if we start designing process without sketching, so it would, it is possible. You can even start writing without going through uh, writing code without going through these steps. That is possible. It's just for easier understanding. Like I made a sketch. Now I know, okay, I need these basic elements at least. Apart from that, if I need something, I'll enhance it over here. So that is a raw phase. Then you come to a little bit refined and then final prototypes. So you can skip these steps. These are not mandatory, but they make your coding journey easy. So it uh, reduces the errors. So you can skip them, not, not necessary, but very useful if you follow them. So like I have this line and let's make it zero first. And let's have a little bit thickness. Let's have two, I think would be good. Yeah, looks nice. 
Now let's add a username over here. We'll have a simple text. Let's write username. Now it's very much bold. I want, I don't want bold. I want uh, medium. Now let's, let's reduce the font to 24 would be good. Yeah, nice. So I think medium is also looking good. Just place it as per my page. Okay, you see this line, it gives me, okay, this is centrally placed. So nice. So I can create another line for the password. So let's say I write another line over here. Let's see if, yeah. So now I have same lines, zero. Let's mark it two. And let's have another text box. We can even, even copy paste it, but just to make sure we understand the steps, I'm writing these uh, again and again. Password. And it's nice medium 24, nice. So let's move it a little bit above. Let's create a button. For that, I'm using simple uh, rectangle. Let's have this, a nice button. What can we do? How much size can we make? Let's try 165, okay. Oh, let's leave it to 50. So width height, I'm just trying and testing, okay, which one would look good. Let's give it some fill. Let's uh, make it black as of now, okay. And let's have a text. I'm just writing some text to be placed on this button. Uh, I'll mark it as red as of now, but I'll change the color. Now, if I want to place it over this button, I'll simply bring it over here. I'll see it's sentry centrally placed okay i think my button is not centrally placed yeah nice oops i'm sorry yeah i think that was nice yeah let's let's leave it now let's change color to white that's looking nice. Now let's do one thing. Let's capitalize L. Okay. And uh, now I want to round these corners. How would I do it? You see this edges, these round edges. Right now my button is very much uh, pointed at the edges. Now I want to round these edges. You can just try it over here. You can simply place it like this. Let's say we have, the more you increase the value, the more round it becomes. So let's say I make it as a hundred, suppose. So it becomes really round. The edges are round now. If I don't want this much round, I can change uh, the value as well. Let's make it 10. So nice round edges we are getting over here. Let's place it a little bit above. We'll add. I think now up. Nice. So this is the basic wireframe of my login page. These are the bare minimum details I want. And I want only this to be displayed as a basic screen. So this is my wireframe. We would be moving to prototype, but do we understand the concept of wireframe? It's more clean, more visually appealing and more easy to understand what our application would be having. One screen, this is one screen of our application. We can create multiple screens. So do we understand this wireframe structure overall? Perfect. So what I'll do is I'll uh, make, I'll do one thing. I'll place my wireframe over here and I'll copy this again. Let's copy this and let's paste it over here and let's move it above. Yeah. So I would change this one to the prototype so that we can see the differences. 
between a wireframe and a prototype. Now, instead of this thing, I want an image. So what do I need to do? I need to put out an image. So in this shapes section, you have this place image or a video, you can place it. So if I click this, it would take me to my own storage and I can pick up the shapes as well. So let's say I have this logo image with me. I'll simply place it like this and I'll remove the previous logo and everything, uh, the circle and the text because those were for my reference. Now, if I want to have a nice uh, size of this image, what can we do? Let's increase it a little bit. Let's have, let's say 160. Nice. And let's have height also. Let's make it 110. I think this is good. So let's place it at the center of our web page. So nice representation from wireframe to prototype. This is a dummy image of a food ordering application where you can order pizzas and burger. So I don't want to touch this one. It's I think uh, looking good. Welcome to the application. It's fine. Let's uh, let's place it a little bit to the center. I think that's good. Nice. So this is also good. Let's change color. Let's change color of this one. I don't want it black. So let's have a nice orange color that would suit our. I think one uh, one set of orange color. I remember. Let's have, let's change it a little bit more. So don't worry what all these uh, things mean. We would be covering everything, how these colors are being uh, descripted in uh, hexadecimals, like your, oh, as uh, sorry, your alpha, alphanumeric characters. So let's, I think it was six B zero zero. Yeah, nice red color, uh, reddish orange. Nice. So just see. The colors are represented like this in CSS. One of the ways is this is called your hex code. This is one of the ways to represent the color. You see hex over here. This is your hex codes. It represents color. So we can target a color by certain uh, alphanumeric characters as well. So we would be studying them. But right now I'm just showing you how a wireframe is turned into a prototype. So let's move to the next part. Let's change color to again, same color. Let's keep it consistent. Let's keep consistent this one as well. Now I want this one to be little bit gray instead of fully black. Let's have nice shaded gray part. I think that's good. Okay. What was the name? Seven, 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 seven. Do we have over here? Is this the one? No. Yeah, this one. No? Right. Okay, let's change background of this one to orange as well. This orange. Nicely placed. Let's add a little bit more styling to make it appealing. Let's have some border styling. Okay, what can we do? Let's have an eclipse. Over here, I'll just mark some value. Let's have, let's increase height to 10. Yeah. Let's have a bigger one. It's 175. Yeah, let's keep it like this. And I want to place it at the, you see this, uh, uh, this particular, a graphical representation. It is giving me X axis, Y axis, where I need to place is my quadrant, right? Uh, like aligned in a certain way or not. So I can check it. So if it is placed correctly or not. So I think it's good. I think now it, now it's showing me correct quadrant structure with all X axis and Y axis. I leave it like this. Let's give it the orange color. Nice. So let's, yeah, leave it like this. This is looking good. Let's copy this and let's see if we are able to, yeah, we are able to have same one over here. 
we'll move it. I think nice. I think we can leave it like this. So you see how uh, a wireframe is turned into a prototype, a simple prototype with no functionality as of now. It's just with colors and image to tell the client, okay, your page would look like this, your sign up, sign in page would look like something this, something like this. So do we, uh, are we clear with the prototype? What, like how it is different from a wireframe? Because the best way to understand software development lifecycle is to actually experience it, to actually write some code, to have an understanding how things are working on each stage. First, we defined the goal, then we created a sketch, then a wireframe, and then a prototype. This is a prototype with no functionality as of now. So uh, if we want to present it on a mobile screen, right now it's rectangular. If I want to present it on an iPhone 8 screen, I can use it like this also. This presents a button, you click, it would create a nice layout for us. Let's see. You see this iPhone like structure, this would look like this. Your wireframe would look like this. And if I go over here, your prototype would look like this. So nice way to tell your client, okay, this is a screen. This is the web page. This is the application page would look like. Isn't it nice that how easily we can create something so beautiful. So any questions related to wireframe and prototype before we move ahead and move to the coding part towards the development part. So how to run this one? This particular page. So, uh, could you please explain your question a little bit more? Okay, for that, there's this button, this, this play button you get at the top right corner. Once you are done with your prototypes, uh, sorry, your wireframe and prototype, you just click this button. And for each particular, each particular frame that you created, these are two frames I created. Over left panel, you can see two frames I created. For each frame, it would create the layout of the screen being uh, used. We used iPhone 8, so we're able to view on an iPhone 8 structure. So nice way to have a look of your application before writing the code. Okay, so we have 15 minutes. Let's move to development part and see if we are able to complete it. And remember, I won't be explaining uh, all the terms in the development part as of now, I just want you to have a look that how code looks like, how it is changing on the web browser and how, uh, like, just have a look at how development environment look like, because tomorrow we would be installing the development environment. And from next week, we would be understanding each line of code. So right now, don't get into how we are writing code, how we are doing this. Just forget about the understanding part. Just enjoy that how a development part is being created. So let's do it so that we understand the development phase before moving to the uh, code editor installing uh, session. Because if we understand this, we would know, okay, what's the importance of code editor for us? So let me open the code editor. Okay, this one, right? We have this uh, login page. I'll remove this one and Let's open the web browser for this also. So a simple, uh, those who have attended the, uh, the prep course, they might understand few things out of this or maybe the entire thing uh, because they have practiced assignment as well. And those who are new, do not worry at all. I would be covering everything from scratch from next week, definitely. So let's start with it. I'm just using this HTML page and writing some code uh, so that we are able to see the changes over here. So let's do it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. The first thing I want, I want to get a nice uh, iPhone looking uh, area. I don't want to design it directly on my web page. So I'll go to inspect. I'll just uh, click on this section. Let me move it to the bottom part. So don't worry how this is coming from where we would be, we would be covering everything over here. I would select my iPhone eight. Do we have that? Okay. 
Okay, let's let's have let's let's have the, some other one because almost every uh, a phone would have similar configurations. So let's see if we are able to get. Let's edit it. Let's do. We have iPhone eight over here. Yeah. Nice. So I'll quickly go back to my screen. I'll select iPhone eight. Nice. So let's. Okay. So I'm removing this login uh, page heading and I'll start with the development part. So let's just see how things are coming up. If I hit save and let me reload it once. Okay, login page is gone. Let's see. So I'll keep on writing some instructions also for us. So uh, <clears throat> uh, I'll create first, let's say, main container. And dev, I'll so don't worry about what is dev and everything. We would get it, we would get to it. And let's give it some ID. This dev, let's have a quarter circle, top quarter circle. Okay, let's add image. Let's add it in depth. Assets have been let's give it. Mm -hmm. What can I do here? If I hit save, you see I'm getting this image right now. First thing I've provided is I have placed an image. So I'll keep on saving side by side. So you'll see how things are coming up as well. Okay, let's give it some ID also. Mm. Okay, now let's add the welcome text. The text that we were having, let's add it. Okay, let's add the... I'll add it in a paragraph. So this welcome to app, we would be coming to styling as of now. I'm I'm just placing uh, the elements in my on in my application first. So let's have an ID. Let's name it welcome text. Okay, let's move to the next part. Let's have the main container, the content container, login. What, what, what all did we have there? Heading, uh, login heading was there. Then we had username, input, then password input button all right we we'll create a container for this one let's name it let's uh, call it content container save it I'll just go uh, okay let's let's add uh, the things that we want first i want login Okay, the the bold one that I want. Let's name it 
login title let's name it as title okay then we had a nice line below it right let's call it login underline so if i hit save you see this login coming over here the underline is not coming because we would be providing it through css okay uh, uh, let's have the input for us so one was the text there was a placeholder uh, username let's give it an id you input nice if i hit save okay i'm getting this username i'll just copy this one i'll change it to password input okay so everything would be covered everything would be covered i'm just showing you how things are happening in sdlc how things move from one step to the other so right now they are in uh, uh coming together we would be styling them too so that they come one above each other okay so let's come out of this div or we can do one thing we have to place button as well right so let's write let's place button inside the div and we have login and uh, let's give it login button save okay i have all the elements now with me and so this part nobody knows as of now so we all we would be covering every part of this every line of this every word of this this is just to show you how development environment is worked how things come up on your browser so we would be covering everything do not worry about just enjoy how things are happening so we have the quarter circle as well at the bottom right so let's have that okay what was the id given above okay copy this one i'll paste i'll change it from top right to we that was bottom left nice now i have placed all the elements on my structure this uh, quarter circles i have provided something on my html which i can style it so this is the basic structure now let's come to the styling part so i'll do one thing i'll just uh, make it to make it more visible let's uh, word wrap this one okay yeah nice let's increase a little space so now every id what is id a very brief description uh, to target a unique element like students have id they are unique to target them uniquely i have provided this id we would be covering them but how to target them in css it's through id i'm doing so let me first uh, do one thing i'll link this css file first let's say let me link it over here let's do it and what's style css and let's have that poppins font as well i have that link with me i think okay let's i think i have this one was yeah so this is sometimes some fonts are not pre installed on your computer Google Fonts is a website which provides us a range of fonts. So the one that we used on our uh, Figma uh, prototype, that one I have, uh, I have uh, picked up from the Google Font. So we would be covering this as well: how to pick up the fonts you uh, want on your screen. So don't worry if things seem to be little bit overwhelming right now. 
but they are really interesting and best thing is you can see them happening over here right away so let's move to the uh, css part let's write some styles so first part i would move from one id to the other so just see first id is my container so i'll simply write container i'll write the css syntax rules and i'll uh, keep on adding styling so what's the fan font family okay it's poppins so if i hit save that poppins have been applied so let's uh, it's it's in the main container right this one yeah poppins have been applied you see the font has been changed login and everything now it, it corresponds to that same font that we were having in figma application okay what are, let's mark 100% so uh, should we cover the styling part today or would it be okay if i take 5 10 minutes to cover this one if everyone is okay with it i would cover it today else uh, because we have 2 minutes left so should we cover it uh, later on or uh, just give me okay so let's cover it it would hardly yeah, take 10 let's minutes complete it. yeah let's complete it rahul this will show the automation why okay let's have uh, the nice border i want to give nice border to this whole application so let's have border and i can write i think one pixel solid and uh, the font the color i was using ff i think i thought 6b00 yeah it's giving me nice color over here so let me just increase the size let me see you see this nice border being coming over here so you can see things happening right away very beautiful so let's have box sizing border box let's have position relative right so basic styling and let's move to the next uh, one what was the next one uh, we would cover these quarter circles the top and the bottom one at the very end i'm not writing it right as of now first we would create the app without those extra quadrants so let's move to the image container okay i want image to be center right text line center next uh, okay i want some margin at the top i want some gap at the top so i can write something like this i think margin top would work let's have uh, 40 pixels okay nice nice gap perfect now what do i want i want my image to be slightly bit smaller let's have what's the logo image right Let's move to the image. Now let's have width. I think uh, we can check that also. I think it was 160 I kept. 160 pixels and height was 10 pixels. Let's see. Nice. Nice little size of our logo. This one. Okay, let's move to the next part. Uh, next is your welcome text. Now you want it to be center. So let's put it uh, in center, text align center. And uh, we wanted a particular font size. Uh, I'm keeping 24 pixels as a standard font size. So let's have, uh, uh, let's have a lower font size for this one and remaining we would keep 24 pixels. We have 20 pixels for this one. And for others, for username, password, and login, this one, the button one, I would keep 24 pixels. And for this one, uh, I, let's say 35, 40 pixels would, would be good. Okay. So this is your welcome text. Now I want to target these areas. This is being placed in this particular whole container. So let's target this container first. We have this content. 
container and uh, what can we do over here first let's center everything okay now everything is in center login comes in center button comes in center okay let's uh, what else let's have some uh, some space below this button so let's have some margin bottom okay as of now good okay let's move to the title this login title login title now i want font size bigger let's have 40 pixels okay i want it to be bold font weight needs to be bold it's bold what else can we do let's not keep any margin below it because we are we would be keeping a line let's have margin uh, bottom to be zero so i'm just placing it uh, very close to the line first so now let's let's get that line that we were having login underline Now let's give it some border first, border bottom. Let's have some thick line, four pixels solid. And yeah, let's see if we are getting, yeah, a full line we are getting. Now I want it to be half. So let's have width to be 50%. typo nice so let's uh, mm -hmm. let's bring it to center margin auto good good nice now oh, it's very close to the your output so what can we do we can increase some space between this uh, login text and more space between this username and password so let's have margin uh, top to be 10 pixels nice and let's have margin bottom 30 pixels okay so you see we are structuring our application from top to bottom slowly and steadily we are not uh, worried about these tags as of now we are just worried about this we were just worried about this and this we're slowly moving one by one okay so let's move to the uh, uh let's say username input this one right so let's have username input now what uh, what all do we can do let's have width 90 percent so that it takes 90 percent left to right space so break is not allowed because uh, it's a css syntax rule if you have two letters either you use camel case or hyphen between them we, we would be covering the naming conventions as well so break is not allowed in this because then it would consider this to be one element and this to be another child element inside this. So now my username is taking this entire space. My password automatically comes down. Let's provide some more styling. So I'll quickly write some margin top. Let's have 10 pixels for this one. Let's have margin bottom 10 pixels. Okay. I do not want this boxy shape. Let's have border to be none. Okay. But I want the uh, bottom line, right? Border bottom. Now let's have nice. nice line we are getting we would be covering this username now 
before that, let's uh, make the same styling for password. Okay, let's copy this one. I'll copy this one. I'll paste it and I'll just name it as password input. Nice. I want this text to be a little bit bigger. We have pseudo class as well as let's have input and we have placeholder, right? Yeah. Um, let's have color to be, let's say, gray or light gray. We have light. Uh, do we have light gray? Yeah. Does it look nice? I think it would go. Or oh, let's say light gray. The early one was better. Yeah, let's have this one as of now. And uh, font size we are keeping as 24 pixels for this one. So nice username, password, text over here. Let's come to the button part. Now. So let's say what's our button, login button, right? Now we want same color first. So let's have background color to be same. If I hit save, I'm getting same color. Now I want to have some height and width. Let's have a width to be 165 pixels. I think it's way big. Let's have some height first. Let's have height to be um, 50 pixels. Let's, we can reduce it a little bit. I think this looks good. Now to have the edges to be, to be uh, rounded, what can we do? Let's have text color first. Text color, we want white. Okay, we're having white, right? Now, Font size, okay, we want font size to be 24 pixel. Font increasing, let's have little bit bold font weight. Mm, let's give it 600. I think we can reduce it. Nice. So let's uh, round our edges. Let's water radius. Let's have 10 pixels. Nice round edges we are having. And uh, we don't want this additional border that we see dark border around our button. So border none. No border. Let's have some spacing uh, above our button. Margin top. Let's have 20 pixels. Okay, nicely spaced. So, so if if I see that something is being crammed, the letters are not clearly visible. I can also have letter spacing over here. Letter spacing. Let's uh, let's say I have let's say I have two pixels. So I see the letters. This login letters have little bit spacing between them. If I want less, very less, I can have one pixel. Yeah, nice. So this is the basic layout without those quadrants. Let's come to the quadrant part. So let's come to what quarter, what was, what was our class? If, if sometimes you do not remember the class, it's always advisable or ID. It's always advisable to copy paste it. So where was it? This one, right? Okay, where we have, where we have. So I'll just copy this one. I'll paste this one and write the styling for it. Now, uh, to make a quadrant, we need 100%, or oh, let's say 100 pixels. I'll just write it. 100 pixel. Okay, height needs to be 100 pixels because I want my circle to be 100 by 100. A nice, perfectly round circle. 
to make uh, the edges round, we have this border radius, right? Now we have four values to as per the corners, one, two, three, four, and we would be covering that right now. I'm just writing how to get the quadrant for us. 100, let's say 100 pixels and uh, let me give the color, background color, this one. Okay, so you see, I'm getting this nice uh, background color with, okay, there is an error. OX instead of OX, I want to write PX pixel. So if I hit save, this nice quadrant over here, because of this border radius we are getting, if I remove this one, I would get a simple box. Because of this property, this border radius property, I'm able to create a quadrant. So this represent different corners, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which quad, which corner we want to target that depends uh, on the quadrant in which corner we want to place. So if I hit save now, if I want to place it on the right, so let's make position absolute. So we would be studying these positions as well, how to position a particular element. So we would be studying everything. I'm telling you, this is just a glimpse of how things would be moving ahead. What kind of applications we would be building. You see with single lines of code, things are getting into place. Similarly, I'll just copy paste this one for the lower one because almost styling would be same. The only difference would be in the name of this ID. Instead of top right, we would have bottom left. And instead of this value 100 pixel over here, it would be zero. And we want to target the left one. So let's have this 100. This would, because it goes from top right, bottom left. There is specific order. So we would be covering that order as well. So if I just make it now, if you see, so if I'll hit save, it's coming over here. I don't want it over here. I want to change the position instead of right. I'll want the bottom to be zero. Now, why zero? We would be covering them. So simply it's coming over here. It's a nice application being created. So this is your development phase right now. I've not added any functionality, anything. Right now, I've not added any JavaScript functionality. This is just a way of creating an application. So someone is asking why you didn't write the height property at the main container. So it depends. It, it, uh, sometimes you may need it. Sometimes you may, might not need it. A styling is never similar. I can write this particular line of code in 10 different ways. They, they can be multiple ways as well. When you will study Flexbox and grid. There are multiple ways to do it. This application, same thing. So it depends that a particular line can be adjusted without height or not. So it depends from developer to developer and choice of styling as well. So this was for today's session, your uh, wireframing, sketching and the development phase, how things are happening between HTML and CSS. So any questions related to today's session? I think uh, it was really interesting to have a glimpse of how things would be coming ahead. So we would be covering every line over here. Any word, any letter you see on these two code editor screens, we would be covering them. Do not worry if you did not understand the lines, but you, you just view how things were being uh, formulated. So any questions for today's from today's session, because moving forward from tomorrow, we would be installing this code editor, understanding the functionalities as well as we would be uh, from next week, we would be on, we would be moving purely to this coding part. There would no theory, no uh, slides. I would say uh, like very theoretical style slides would not be there. Everything would be practical just like this. I know I took 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes more, but I think it was worth it. Uh, yes. It worth it. Any questions? Uh, do we have class tomorrow? Uh, yes, I think we have class tomorrow. We would be installing yes. these code editors. Mm -hmm. Yes. And everyone join with your laptops because we would be catering every student personally, and we would be making sure that they install the software correctly. So do not join it with your phone from now onwards, join it with your laptops or personal desktops. So over to you, Talash, if they do not have any questions, anything you want to share. 